Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan, sitting in one of our service bays with Mr. Dwayne the RV Wizard, Hermit. <laughs> Alright, one of our other jobs, leave us a little message, what's, what's his nickname? Anyway, more to the point, Dwayne, uh, I caught him kind of in the middle, caught him sounds like I caught him doing something wrong, I found him in the middle of doing a wash and repack on some uh, uh, fifth wheel bearings over here. And he goes, Josh, have you ever talked to people about this? And I know that we have a little bit, but this is a topic that comes up regularly, and I think it's a good thing to kind of have refreshed. So why are, like, what are you doing, and why are you doing it? And why should people be doing it? All right, guys, I'm just finishing up, but I would have completely pulled the hub, removed it, washed the bearings, cleaned them, inspected them, and put a new wheel seal in. That holds the grease from the bearings from getting to the brakes. Because that's, that's bad. That's bad. Um, <laughs> lubricating your brakes is not necessary. <laughs> so, one big issue we have with this, with people actually lubricating their brakes, is when you pull the center cap. The little this, grease buddy, the, the hub? That little grease zert you're going to see. Those are actually only for emergencies. Right. So, say you're rolling down the road and you notice this smoking. Stop, let it cool off, pull a little grease in it and drive. If you grease these on a routine basis, you're gonna end up with so much grease in this hub, it's gonna force it past the ceiling out into the brakes. And that's a good way to not have your brakes work properly and potentially start a nice little smoky fire back there. Exactly. And when that happens, guys, it gets really expensive because at that point, you have to replace the hub because it's contaminated and the brakes. So to give you an idea, this takes about an hour per axle? Is hour per axle. So that's going to run you a couple hundred bucks, but this is absolutely a case of an ounce of prevention being worth a pound of cure because if you fry that hub, um, I've seen some really extreme examples of a RV losing a tire that was never properly maintained. And a lot of people don't know this stuff. That's why we're kind of putting it together here for you. Um, <coughs> it's going to cost a lot more beef. Far more inconvenient to have that situation happen than do this every now and then. Now, speaking of which, how often should we be doing this? All right, guys, when people come here and go through orientation, the manufacturer recommends 12 and 12. What that is, is 12 months or every 12,000 miles. Whichever comes first? Whichever comes first. Okay. Um, what a lot of people do and we recommend is when they come back to see us for winterization, that's also a good time to check and have a wash and repack them. Okay. It's usually once a year. It's already here. It's already here. You're not getting any downtime that way, and you're ready to go next spring when you get it out of storage. Okay. What about, um, like, we will sometimes have used RVs here that somebody had on, like, a seasonal or a permanent site that wasn't towed, and... Now, suddenly, it's sitting here in the used RV market. What do you say for folks that are looking at an RV like that? Uh, one of the first things I would do is have the bearings inspected, washed, and repacked, and break. If your intention is to go back to towing. Yes. Well, even if you're going to... I can't say how far you're going to tow it, even if you're going to go to a permanent site. So it's just never a bad idea? It's never a bad idea. Okay. Ever. I think that's fair. I appreciate the candor. I, I want people to get a real response here. You know, because you might say, well, hey, you and I might be talking to them and say, hey, we're just going to take it to a permanent site. But that permanent site's in Ludington and the bearings were bad. They're going to get hung up on the road somewhere. Gotcha. So, as always, guys, just trying to keep you updated, informed. I need to let him go so I'm not slowing him down here because we have a customer who needs to get back to camping with their eagle. But, if, as always, hit that subscribe button, follow along. We always have more information coming. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. Don't forget, we gotta, we got to give Dwayne a nickname. I tell everybody in orientation the 12 and 12 thing, trying to get it hung in their mind. Good. Well, I, I, I'm glad that we're avoided to people proactively. Awesome. Well, it's just like a winterization, you know, the, the reason, it sounds like we're trying to pump them for business when we say at least your first year, come back and see us for a winterization. But if we miss something in a winterization, it freezes up, then it's on us. Well, man, I tell you, I, I know when I was younger, lived in Quincy, we had a pool. We could have winterized our pool ourselves, but 
Every time we looked at it, we thought, you know, if we screw this up and we got to buy a new pump, God bless America, that's going to cost a lot more than a winterization. And I'd rather it, I'd rather it be someone else's liability, you know, and I'd rather, hey, as long as you stand behind your work, I'll pay you a couple bucks to do it. So I just don't got to worry about screwing it up. And you know, a lot of our campers, you know, when they're going to find that they've let something freeze up because they missed an winterization is that Friday when they're getting ready to go camping. Well, it, yeah, it's like, um, uh, my my uh, my previous home, wintertime came around, fired up the furnace, it didn't fire up. And you say to yourself, why does the furnace always go out in the winter? Because you don't use the furnace in the summertime. Exactly. You don't even realize you got a bearing problem until, you know, it's too late. Anyway, I need to let you go. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for letting Thanks, me take Josh. up your time.